If you want to create videos for instructional purposes, how-to videos, videos that are going to go into online courses or tutorial videos, the style of video that you're creating is what we would call a screencast because typically you're using the computer screen as a character in your video to help explain whatever the concept is you're teaching. Now, I have been doing screencasting for a long time, a very, very long time. Take a look here. This is 30 years ago, 1992, and I started my career by creating tutorial videos teaching people how to use computers. And things have come a long way since those early days when we would point a camera at a computer screen to try and convey information. Today's screencasting software makes it easy for us to create very good videos very quickly. But you and I want to do better than good, do we not? Yes, we do. We want to take good video, tutorial video, and we want to make it great. So today, the secrets that I've learned in over 30 years on making great tutorial videos here on Dotto Tech. Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? And before we get going, I want to do a quick shout out and thanks to our friends at TechSmith, the makers of Camtasia, for sponsoring today's video. Now here is our goal for today, is I wanna take a good piece of content, a simple little screencast that would serve very well and be a good piece of content to share, and by using some techniques and by using some tools that we have available, turn that from a good piece of content into a great piece of content. Lofty goals, yes, but I'm pretty sure we can get there. So let's begin by taking a look at just the basics of screencasting. So let's get going. What we're gonna to use today as a base for creating a great video from good video is a simple little screen capture that I did showing how to do something inside of a spreadsheet. And this is very typical of the sort of things that we might record and use in a tutorial in a course or in some sort of a promotional video. So here's the video that we're gonna use. It's just a quick little example of some features of a spreadsheet, which will then color the cells that you've identified. So you can make the document look far more appealing and make it easier for people to differentiate between the different products by choosing different colors for each individual cell. So, so that, that is a simple screencast that I recorded in Camtasia. Camtasia will record the screen, it'll record your voice, and it'll also record the video, and it combines them together and allows us to edit the final output. And we can, we could just take that video as it sat, and we could publish it. It explains the concept quite well. But let's look at the shortcomings of publishing a video like that, if we were to publish a tutorial like that. First of all, there's very little personality with it. While you can hear my voice, you can't see my face, so the video isn't particularly engaging from that perspective. Now, not everybody wants to have their face on video all the time, but it does add a layer of engagement to whatever it is that you're, that whatever it is you're publishing. The second thing is, because the screen is, we don't know what device people are gonna be looking at it on, it might be hard to follow the cursor, the mouse movements and take a look at the details of the menu. So while we see the general concept that's being portrayed, we don't really teach and we don't draw our viewers' eyes to the most important elements of the screencast as we're presenting the information. So here's the, one of the keys to taking good video and making it great. What we just saw, I would classify as good. But to make it great, we want to turn the screen itself into a character. We want to control the narrative by drawing our viewers' eyes to different aspects of that uh, of the screen. So we want to do camera moves, we want to zoom in on different items, we want to highlight different elements within the screen in order to better tell a story. So this is how we do that. Let me show you. So here we are inside of Camtasia, and this is the raw file that I recorded in Camtasia that we see right here. So this is the quick little tutorial video that you just saw. Now inside of Camtasia, we have tracks that have the top track here has a video. Now you didn't see the video in the original uh, version of this particular screencast, but we will add it later. Here is the video as I recorded it. And this second track here, this is the screen itself. And you can see that it captured my entire computer screen. Now you see more of my computer screen here than you saw in that little demo that I did. That's 
because what I did is I zoomed in on the screen here. I scaled the screen up to kind of hide all of the extra stuff in order to show, in order to just make this the screen look a little cleaner as I did that demo. Okay, let me just, uh, let me move that underneath so that there, we, so we can't see the face anymore. So this is what we just saw is the video running looking like this. But as I mentioned, we want to be able to draw the viewer's eye to different elements on the screen. So we can do that by using some of the tools in Camtasia to do transitions, to be able to zoom in and out on a particular area in the screen. And the way that we do that is by using animations, by actually animating the screen itself. So let me show you how it would work. What I'll do is I'm gonna scrub here ahead, ahead in the video until the point that I go to the top menu there, right there, where I go in and I want to pull down the drop down menu with the color. So I wanna draw the viewer's eye to that exact location. Now how I can do that is by going here in the animations and choosing a custom animation. And the way it works in Camtasia is we literally just drop that right on top of the video clip in the timeline. And you see we have this little arrow here. Now what the arrow does is it simply allows us to create two different states to that particular screen. So the original state is what we see here, and the final state after the after the transition has been accomplished is we've zoomed in, and I'm see I'm just using the scale tool here over in the properties menu, and then I'm repositioning the screen to where I want it to be. That's the finished state, much zoomed in, so that because our cursor has gone up there, there's a drop down menu happening, the viewer's eye is naturally gonna get drawn to it. This is how we make the computer screen a character in our story, it, because it, it becomes active, it becomes a dynamic member of the story or a dynamic element in the story that we're telling. So if we take a look now at what happens to that, is we see it play forward, there it is. And so we just zoomed in. And actually, I think I'll even zoom in a little bit more on that, which is good. And we see the zoom in and we see I click and the fill color will drop down and I select it from there. Once that is done, we've now changed the color of the, of the element. So we need to do another transition. And you know exactly what I'm gonna do right now, don't you? I'm gonna take that and I'm gonna zoom back out so people can see the results of the change of color of the cells that we just did. So now if we take a look at that from start to finish, we now have a camera move in, we continue talking, we see the new menu items so they can easily identify exactly what's happening and then they get to see the completed result. And I would just tweak that over just a little bit, there we go, and that is done. So that is how we take the first step to improving the quality of our screencast. And the unique tools that are built into Camtasia give us the ability to do that. Now, there are some other techniques that happen because as people look at, depending on what device they're looking at the computer screen or, or looking at the video on, they might or might not be able to see the cursor very easily. See, the cursor is very tiny down here in the bottom corner. So we can actually adjust the size or even the way that the cursor works if we're using it as a tutorial by going here into our menus in, in the side of Camtasia and choosing cursor effects. This allows us to do things like create a highlight. You've probably noticed in different tutorial videos that there's a bubble, kind of a bubble highlight around the cursor to help draw your eye to the cursor. If I select that and drag it down, all you do is drag it and drop it onto the, onto the video in the timeline again. And now you see it's got that little yellow ball around it and you can change the highlight color if you, from here. If I wanted to make it orange, I could make it orange. And now that cursor as it moves around on the screen will have that orange ball. That's one thing you could do now, another thing that we could do to the cursor is we could actually make the cursor larger. Over here in the properties menu, we can select the cursor itself. And if you take a look here, let's you see the cursor right here. We can actually scale up on the cursor and make it larger. Now it does get a little bit pixelated as it gets larger, but that would also allow you to see it more easily as it moves around on the screen. So you have those different options as far as, again, drawing the viewer's eye to exactly whatever it is that you're trying to show in the video. Another feature I like to use in order to help draw the viewer's eye and help explain what's happening on screen is the use of annotations. Now, the annotations menu inside of Camtasia gives us a lot of different tools for our making videos better toolkit. 
It includes things like putting out call outs, which is little blocks of text that you can put on the screen at any point. This is where we go, say, if you want to take uh, a part of the screen and you want to make it private by adding a blur effect, you can do that. That's a form of annotation, which again, makes videos better. But the one I want to show you right now is the little sketch motion animations, which I really love using. These are simple little animations that you can draw on the screen, which again will help draw the viewer's eye to what it is you're trying to emphasize. So if I really want to emphasize that menu that says fill color right there, what I could do is I could take maybe, what are we going to use here? Let's use this arrow here. We bring the arrow out. Now, when we bring it out, it's kind of skinny and it's kind of yellow and it's not pointing to where we want. So it's not really working for us at all at this point. But if we go here into the properties menu, I can change the color. So I'm going to change it to my corporate uh, orange color. I can change the thickness of it, which is going to dramatically improve how clear it is to see. Let's make it much, much thicker. There we go. And I can rotate it. If I click here, do you see I've got a little bar here? I can add a rotation to it like that. Now I'm going to reposition it to where I want it to be and let's see how it works. Let's see if I've improved this and taken this video up a notch. All right, let's watch it. There it is. And that combination, I might start it a little bit later. I can just slide it here on the timeline to start it a little bit later because it's an element that I can edit. Oh, if it's too big, I can make it smaller just by squeezing it down a bit, or I can make it bigger if I want, but let's just leave it like that for now. And we'll say that is going to work for us for now. All right. So we've just, oh, I've got to end it at the right point because right there is where it should end. So I'm going to take the transition, push it forward. And so now we have a completed little extra piece. These are the little steps that take your video from good to great because you're, you're respecting your viewer and you're making the screen more visually appealing. So that's the first thing is creating camera moves and creating some visual interest on the screen. Now you may have noticed that when I started to show you the, uh, when I started to show you the results here, that we've got this track here, which contains my video and the audio that I, that I uh, recorded originally when I recorded this demo. And so in Camtasia, how the different layering of the tracks works is anything that's down towards the bottom of the screen is behind the stuff that's above it. So the, having the computer screen shown here means that the video is completely hidden. So if I want to take that video and show it on screen, I can pull it up here. And so now we can see my video. And if I unmuted it, you would be able to hear the audio as well, but we're just going to leave it muted for now so that you can see what I'm doing here. But let's make this video to start with. Let's make it hundred percent size so it fills the screen and we can see that I've got this video here ready to go. Now, a lot of people don't like seeing themselves in video, which is fine. And if they're going to create tutorial videos and they don't want their face on video, you can do a good job of creating a tutorial video with just a voiceover and Camtasia will allow you to do that. We just have to hide the video and it'll I'll just be heard and not seen. But some people don't mind being seen. And if you're going to really be targeting and creating a good video, you create much more engagement by having a human face, by having the, the person who's explaining the whatever the content concept is on screen. I believe it adds extra value if you have, if you're comfortable with it. So there's two ways that we can include video. We can include video by cutting back and forth between the demo and the video, or we can combine the two and, and create a composed screen where you see both the video and the tutorial at the same time. Now, if you want to do just a cutting back and forth between the video, you can do that really easily. You can do it as easily as uh, I could start here with my face on screen and I could use a transition. If we want to use the, remember how we use the uh, animation transition in order to change the state and zoom in. We can also do that to change the opacity or change the fact that we make the uh, video layer transparent so that we can see what comes beneath. And I'll show you how that might work. I'm going to again, drag a custom animation down. And now the beginning state is my video is up. My end state at the end of this transition, if I go over into my properties menu, if I turn the opacity right down, we'll see that now the video screen comes through. So what this will look like to the viewer when we actually publish this video is this will be the result is I will be speaking, 
hopefully really engaging. I talk, 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 talk. Now we come through and I'm showing what's happening and we see the camera move and we see how it's applied. Do you see how just with these few moves, we've improved the quality, we've improved the interest level and hopefully the comprehension of the content that we're creating for this video. So that is using cutting back and forth between full screen video and your demo, which is a terrific way to do things. If you wanna kick it up a notch from there, we can also incorporate having the video in a window inside of the screen or in a portion of the screen. Now again, the easiest way to do this is I'm just gonna split the video here at this point here. Uh, to make it easier. So I'm just doing a quick little split. So now I've split the video. So we actually have two different tracks and I'm going to turn the opacity up on the cut video and I'm going to change the size. I'm going to make that video back down to about 25% or so. I'm going to make it uh, maybe 30. Let's make it right there, 46%. And I'm just going to position that video down here in the bottom corner. And you will see a lot of content creators will do this exact method here, where you can, where you can now see the video in the bottom as it's being explained. And you can crop this video if you choose. I'm going to turn on enable crop mode, which means that I can then take the edges of the video and I can adjust exactly what's seen this way and I can even move the video over a little bit more so it takes up a little less screen real estate, so it's less invasive as far as covering up what's happening on the screen. And this gives us another complete option for doing a tutorial where we have our face on screen all the time, as you see with me when I've got the bubble in the screen as we're doing, as we're doing, as we're doing this video. But this gives you that ability to be able to have all of the different elements at the same time. Now, personally, I think that this technique here of having your face on screen at the same time as you're demoing exactly what's happening is, is probably the kind of the ultimate way to create and present information in this form. Now, you'll notice that in this video I'm doing right now that I am also in a bubble in this screen. The bubble is created using even more advanced techniques that are built into Camtasia. I won't take time in this video today to show you how I did that, but we use something called alpha channels where we, where I create, if you take a look down here in the bottom of the screen, it's set up because I've got it set up as a template, but I actually, uh, we actually, I actually have this pre-created as a template that allows me to very quickly do this kind of an insert with this bubble in the bottom corner in order to show, in order to, again, just improve the visual quality of the screens that we're creating. Now it's going to get really good. I want to show you how we can use different elements uh, as templates that we can use over and over again inside of Camtasia, again, to really increase the, the narrative quality of the videos that we're producing. Now you can do transitions from scene to scene by doing blends or blurs or fade outs and fade ins. But I like to use elements that I can add text to so that I can clearly define what's coming up next in a tutorial video. And so inside of Camtasia, we have libraries. Libraries contain elements that you can add. They're, they're different assets that you can store, that you can recall at any point, and you can add to different videos. And you can have a variety of different libraries available to you. So I have one called YouTube Assets, which is what I'm using right now. And I am going to choose, where is it? There it is. It's called, I call it Cover Transition. So I created this myself, and I'll show you a little bit about how we did that in just a moment. But this allows me to take this transition, drop it here onto the timeline, and if we take a look and scrub ahead, you'll recognize it because you've just seen it in, in action. But this is a template that allows us to do a transition from one scene to another as we're going through the, as we're going through the explanation of the video. So how I'm gonna use this right now is I'm just gonna take this video here and I'm gonna split it right here. I'm just gonna split both the, both the tracks of the demo right there. And I'm going to make this next section, I'm just going to say that, and we're going to have to just imagine that there's a logical transition from what's happening right, I'm going to move that other way, what's happening right here and what's happening right here. We're going to pretend that this is an entirely different part of the story. Now I can take this cover transition and I can put it over top here. And now it is going to bridge this scene to this scene. And you notice that there's a little, a little kind of a, a nice sound effect in there as well. And so that again, helps break up the information and prepare the person who's viewing it for, to, to be receptive to whatever information is coming next. Now you will notice that I've got this 
rather generic title of section here. This is one of the real things that really gets me excited when I use Camtasia is I've got the ability to create these elements and, but the elements themselves are dynamic. If we go over here into our properties menu, you can see here that I've, the transition is named here, but down here we see text of selection. So that's what I've written here. I can change this. To anything and watch what will happen is it will now read oh but it's too big that's no problem I can go in here and I can make it smaller and I can adjust the size and it's that easy for me to create a really nice custom element that allows me again to make my video that much more valuable now this uh, this transition that you just saw, this is actually four different video clips that have been combined. So what I did is back earlier when I was preparing these different templates for my videos is I made a quick Camtasia video and these are the different elements. These are the timelines with the sound effect and the shape and all of the transitions that I used in order to create. Now this is a bit, I'll admit, this is a bit of an advanced Camtasia technique that I'm showing you right here. But worry not, because you don't have to get to my level of, uh, of competence in using Camtasia to use tools like this. Because Camtasia includes, with the, with the when you purchase Camtasia, they include a premium free video assets. These are templates very similar to what I just showed you, but these are different templates, some of which are available for free. Some of them you can purchase a, a, a license for more advanced ones, but these are the same kind of ideas where, actually, let me just go back and let me show you motion graphics because that's a little bit more relevant for what we're talking about. So these are different animations. If you wanted to use an animation that looks like this, you can just send it to Camtasia and it will, and then you, or so that's a, that's a premium one. Here's a starter one. If you wanted to do this animation here, you can put it into Camtasia. You can modify the color and the text and the logo and all of that, but it's very easy for you to incorporate these different elements into your videos, which again, adds so much value to your video by giving ancillary information to your viewer or preparing them for what comes next, or just making your video look more polished and more professional. And there are, as I say, there are dozens of these different pre-made little elements that you can import into Camtasia and you can take advantage of. This will kick up the quality of your videos substantially and you'll be that much more proud of the content you're creating and you'll be able to take your videos from good to great by doing these steps. So this video has now probably gone on long enough, but let's recap and take a look. This was our original screencast video, which I would say is good. Let's take a quick look through it. You can then select any of these pre-done colors, which will then color the cells that you've identified. So you can make the document look. And this is the version that I created using the techniques that I believe take a good tutorial video and make it great or select a range of cells and then apply the formatting. Now, how you apply the formatting is you go into the toolbar and you find the fill color tool. By clicking on that, you can then select any of these pre-done colors, which will then color the cells that you've identified. So I believe that we can take dry tutorial content and make it far more digestible, make it give it, allow it to have far more impact with our viewer by using the tools to tell better stories, to keep our viewers engaged, to make sure that there's clarity in what we present by drawing their eye to the proper location, amplifying whatever that part of the message is and creating visual stimulation and visual interest so that the pace of the story continues on. Now, this is just the tip of the iceberg of the sorts of features and tools that we have inside of Camtasia in order to create better videos. But I think that we've done a good job now of showing you the basic, some just some of the most basic things that you can do and you can very easily attain yourself if you use a tool like Camtasia to get you to tell your story better. That's all the time we have for today's video. If we helped you, if you found it inspirational, if you found it enlightening, a like, a share, and of course a subscribe would be greatly appreciated. Now, before we leave, one last thing, 
Every week here at Dottotech, we host a tutorial webinar on some form of content creation or productivity. They're called Webinar Wednesdays. They're every Wednesday. They're free. I think they're awesome, and I would like to invite you to join us. The links are in the description. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle. When we first opened Claris Works, we are asked what type of document we want to work in. And we can see right here the amazing punch that Claris Works packs. Look at this. Word processing, drawing, painting, spreadsheets, database, and communication modules all rolled into one package. This is fantastic. I could probably spend three or four months just playing with this software. Why don't we